So the first major update to WordPress in quite a while is scheduled to be released November 1st, and that's going to be WordPress 6.1. The beta version dropped yesterday. I've had the opportunity to test out the new version of WordPress. So what I want to do in this video is to walk you through what these changes are. They're quite exciting. We have a brand new uh, 2023 theme, a whole bunch of changes to the Gutenberg page builder and so on. So what I'm going to do in this video is to walk you through what these changes are and what to expect once WordPress 6.1 is released on November 1st of this year. Let's get started. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about here is going to be the 2023 theme. It is quite similar to the 2022 theme in that it's a full site builder. You can build templates for your header, your footer, your single post, and so on. But there are two major upgrades. The very first one is going to be access to styling options. They call them styles. Let me show what I'm talking about. See right here, this is the homepage for my sample website in here. Right now, I'll have access to this link right here that says browse styles. I click inside and now you will see I have access to 10 pre-built styling packages. As an example, if I was to choose the Aubergin styling, right now you will see I have a background color purple, the text font family has changed, the color of the header titles have changed and so on. I could go with electric, now it has changed again and so on. I do like marigold, I like the font family, I like the layout and so on. So. We now have access to 10 pre-built options when it comes to styling. And the wonderful thing here is that you can actually customize these pre-built options. As an example, I've chosen Marigold. I like it. I want to make some changes. I can go back in here. Now go to typography, right? Go click inside. Let's say I wanted to do some changes to the text. I'll click on text right here. And then I can change the size of the font family, the appearance, and so on. Same goes with the, like the links. I could change the colors as well change the layouts and so on. So this is a really, really interesting uh, upgrade. The second upgrade is that for the first time ever, Gutenberg has actually added some font families that we can choose from. Isn't that exciting? The bad news though is that it's only four font families we can choose from. Let me show you what they are. So if you of course have default and then the system font by default, but then we now have access to the DM sans. We have IBM Plex Mono, we have Inter, and then we have the Source Serif Pro. You would think that Gutenberg would have given us a bit more options to, for choosing a font family, but hey, at least this is a start. Hopefully, in the next major update to WordPress, we'll have a lot more than four font families to choose from. So, these are the font families in here. They're pretty nice. Uh, I do like Inter. Inter is quite good. And then also the IBM Plex Mono, if you're making uh, news websites and things like that, this kind of fun family would be ideal. So those are the two major changes that are going to be coming with the 2023 theme. Now, let me walk you through some of the major changes coming to Gutenberg. There's quite a number of them. I will not be able to walk you through every single one, but let me show you the most important ones in my opinion. The first one here has to do with access to dimensions or margins and patterns. So for the first time ever, we will now be able to add margins and patterns to different types of blocks, including the paragraph or text block. As an example, I'm trying to edit out this particular text block in here. You can see I'll now have access to dimensions down there. I click inside and now I'm going to have access to padding or margins. Let's say I wanted to add some padding. I click on padding, click outside. Now I have access to padding and now I can add as much padding as I want. Obviously by default, whatever value you choose in here will apply to all the four sides of the block. But what if you wanted to add separate values, separate patterns for different sides? Now I can click on the link right in here. And now I can say, okay, for top, I'm going to go with 50 pixels for right, keep it at 30 pixels for bottom, maybe bring it down to no pixels. And then maybe for the left, go all the way to 70 pixels, right? I could also just set a custom size for everything by simply uh, clicking back and I'm just reset all, go back to padding. So right here, this link, I can just click inside and then just set a custom pattern size for all the four sides at once. The same goes with the uh, margins as well. I can click on margin, click outside. Now I'll have the ability to add as much margin as I want to my paragraph block. The next major change is going to be access to borders for the images. I've got an image of Batman right here. And let's say I wanted to add some border to the image. I can click on the image right now. And then right here, you can now see I have access to the border option. And then I can add as much border as I want to the image. But the good news here, though, is that you can also add 
a background color for your border you click on the link right there this circle just click inside and now you'll have access to the color picker you can go with any color that you want and you will have the background color right there so a very 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 uh important change also it's kind of interesting i never realized that this option wasn't even available with the current version of gutenberg but it turns out that in a list when you have your items in a list you had no way of rearranging the order without adding additional code it's crazy but thankfully with 6.1 you can now actually change the order. So as an example, let's say in my list here, I wanted to move berries all the way to the top. I can click on berries right now. And then in here, you can see I now have access to either move up berries or move down berries. So I can move berries up, uh, move berries up again. And there it is, berries is now at the very, very top. Honestly, I never knew this option wasn't available uh, with the current version of Gutenberg, but uh, thankfully 6.1 moving forward, you will now be able to arrange the items in your list without adding any additional code one more major change has to do with the navigational block i've got the block in here now the major change is that for the first time you can now change the colors of your sub menu items i don't have a sub menu uh, for my menu in here but let me just show you where you would see it. it's going to be right here on the color you will see that you'll now have access to the sub menu and overlay text so you can change the color of your sub menu items you can also change the background color of your sub menu items as well. So no longer do you have to use the exact same style for your main menu links and then the sub menu links as well. You can now style uh, both differently. A few minor changes to talk about when you're editing your page. Right now, you will no longer see the text preview. You will see view instead. And instead of status and visibility, everything is now under summary. So when you click on summary in here, you can now change the date that you want the post to be published. Uh, you can change the premier link in here, change the template and so on. So everything now falls on the uh, summary. And then the information panel for your pages has a slight improvement. And that is the fact that you now have access to the time to read information. In my case right now, it says one minute to read this very, very short uh uh, text on my page. I'm not sure if this particular feature is incredibly useful, but you know, maybe there's some WordPress users out there who will find this uh, improvement uh, very, very useful. The last major change is actually the change I am most excited for speaking as a WordPress developer, and that change involves template building. See, with 2022, we were kind of restricted to the kinds of templates we could build. As an example, this is 2022 right here. I click on Add New. And I can create a template from like my front page, use an author, category, date tag, taxonomy, and so on, right? However, with WordPress 6.1, there's going to be massive improvements. If I go back to the 6.1 website in here, click on add new. Now you can see I can add a template specifically for my single posts. And best of all, I can create my own custom template. All I have to do, click on custom template, and now I can add a name as an example, a custom template for the post with the sidebar and I can modify it as much as I want. For me, this is the most important, the biggest change coming to WordPress and I'm really, really happy about this. I'm going to make a separate video once the 6.1 has been launched. I'm going to show you how you can create templates using WordPress 6.1. I don't want to do that right now because some of these changes are still work in progress. They might make some changes before it's officially released. So I want to wait until WordPress 6.1 is officially out and then I'll show you how you can create templates using WordPress 6.1. So that's it for today's video where I have walked you through some of the major changes coming to WordPress 6.1. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, share this video with anyone you may feel might benefit from it. And of course, if you're new here, my name is Alex. I make tutorials on WordPress. Please do subscribe, hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. Stay safe out there. And of course, if you have any comments, questions, what do you think about the changes? Are you excited? Or maybe you're not excited. I'd love to hear from you. Drop your comments down in the comment section below. Take good care of yourself and I'll see you next time. Cheers.